Therefore, it's time for member statements. The member from Stormont Dundas, South Lake Gary. Thank you, Speaker. Military heritage is, is more than just battles and medals. Written by local resident Wendy McDonald and edited by author and historian Kimberly Baldwin McGuinness, A Funny Thing Happened to Me at the War is a new book that shines light on the overlooked aspect of successful, motivated armies, that of the bands. Wendy's uncle, Hincliffe Tanner, enlisted in 1940 and was deployed in the UK, Italy, Belgium, and the Netherlands. He served in the 2nd Canadian Infantry and the Royal Canadian Artillery Bands. He drafted memoirs that are now only seeing the light of day 17 years after his passing, retelling stories of motivating trips, playing for liberated villages, and carrying out soldiers' duties and first aid yeah. when called upon. So let me read you from the book's dedication. This project is dedicated to all those men and women who so proudly laid their lives on the line and so selflessly set their musical talents on a stage the likes of the world will never experience again. Also, to all of those who, when they read this, will say with pride, that was my mother, my father, aunt, uncle, etc. May you recall the, their stories with pride and forever let their stars shine on. Congratulations, Wendy and Kimberly, and, and thank you for Hincliffe's memories. I look forward to getting my own signed copy. Congratulations. Thank you. Member Stevens, member from Oshawa. Thank you, Speaker, and I want to share a story. In my driveway the other night, I was approached by an engaging door-to-door -door salesman with questions about my energy consumption. He wondered if I knew that Ontario was going green and if I wanted to as well. Speaker, this company was asking me to give them money. They would then use it to go green on my behalf, and somehow I've bought my way out of my carbon emissions. It would be easy. Like other companies, it would just go on my Enbridge gas bill. Now, Speaker, I understood, and I did not invite this stranger into my house to sign a binding and expensive scam contract, but others do. Our vulnerable neighbours, seniors and new Canadians are signing these contracts every day. Mr. O'Boyle in Oshawa had his heat cut off because he couldn't pay the over $300 a month tacked on his gas bill because of these contracts, costs above and beyond his actual heating costs. Our office works with families regularly, trying to untangle these predatory schemes. Companies like this prey on vulnerable neighbours. They look for people who don't know what they're getting into. The company that came to my door has quite a track record. They've been fined by the OEB, and it doesn't take more than a Google search to see the litany of complaints that they leave in their wake. They look for vulnerable populations who don't understand their rights or obligations, their responsibilities as tenants, renters, or homeowners. They prey on people who don't understand. I want to warn my neighbours. I also want my community to let my office know if they have been taken advantage of by these companies. No business in Ontario should be allowed to build their bottom line by preying on vulnerable people. Thank you. Thank you. For the member statements, the member from Etobicoke Lakeshore. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. On April 2nd and on the 11th anniversary of his passing, Ontarians across the province will be celebrating the 12th anniversary of St. John Paul II. As a Polish-Canadian and somebody, somebody whose family hails from Wadowice, Poland, the birthplace of Karol Józef Wojtyła, I'm especially proud that Ontario became the first jurisdiction in Canada to honour the legacy of one of our generation's greatest spiritual leaders. John Paul II was a universally known figure whose lasting legacy is marked by a strong commitment to peace, equality, human rights, and multi-faith dialogue and understanding. From his days living as a young man in Poland, St. John Paul II lived in a world divided by politics and religion. He dedicated his life and pontificate to piecing it back together. As a spiritual leader, he was dedicating, dedicated to giving voice to those in need and advocating on behalf of the oppressed. He inspired Catholics and non-Catholics alike. He served as a beacon for hope, especially for millions of youth, who were encouraged by his message of faith and activism. He visited Ontario twice as Pope, the last visit to Toronto for World Youth Day, a special pilgrimage he established in 1985, and that was uh, truly an amazing event. St. John Paul II was instrumental in communism's downfall, most notably in Poland, where his leadership helped provide Poles with hope, courage, and resilience in the struggle against communist oppression. No other pope of the modern era has had a greater spiritual or political impact. Thank you. 
Further member statements. The member from Whitby, Oshawa. Thank you, Speaker. My statement is on a need of a dementia strategy. Older Ontarians have helped to build our country and our province and remain a vital part of our communities. They represent our grandparents, our parents, our brothers and sisters, our neighbours and our friends. Speaker, they continuously help shape our communities by sharing their experiences and knowledge as leaders, mentors and volunteers. While older Ontarians are living longer and with less chronic illness or disability, the vast majority of older adults uh, speaker, have at least one chronic disease or condition. Unfortunately, 14 years of liberal waste and mismanagement have meant cuts to the health care services speaker, we depend on. Speaker, the incidence of Alzheimer's and dementia continue to increase. And I call on the government to stop funding the growth of unnecessary bureaucracy in our health care system and shift the funds, Speaker, shift the funds to a patient-centered approach for programs such as the Dementia Strategy to address the slow-motion crisis in our province of Ontario of dementia. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements. The member for Temiskamy Cochrane. Thank you, Speaker. I'm sure we all have great service clubs in all parts of this province, and today I would like to focus on one that's in my riding. The Earlton Lions Club has uh, 26 members. And it's from a small town in Earlton, and they do amazing things. For the last 29 years, they have held a truck and trailer draw. Now it's a motorhome for the last three years. And every year, they travel throughout Northern Ontario to sell tickets for these trucks and for this, for this motorhome. And that's just one of the things they do. And with the money they raise, because they travel throughout the North to uh, bring this money forward, they redistribute that money throughout the north, from the little town of Earl, from 26 members. They give money to hospitals, the Timmins Hospital, the North Bay Hospital, the Sudbury Hospital, Kirkland Lake, Matheson, Iroquois Falls, Cochrane, and Temiskaming Shores each and every year. And this year, there's a special fundraiser going on for the Temiskaming Shores Hospital, so the, the Little Lion, the Earl and Lions Club gave an extra $50,000 to, to the uh, to Miskaming Hospital, and it was one last example. The Army Cadets and Timmins were raising money to go to Vimy Ridge for a special celebration. They were three thousand dollars short, and who came to the rescue? The Earl's Lions Club. I would like to, on all our behalf, thank them and all the other service clubs in this great province of ours. Thank you. Further member statements. The member from Trinity Spadina. Thank you, Speaker. Uh, in my wonderful riding of Trinity Spadina, Wards Island is the eastern end of Centre Island and one of many small islands just south of uh, Toronto's mainland. It's a community of roughly 300 homes and 600 residents and has seen a steady increase in visitors from Toronto and tourists around the world. But what many may not know is how Wards Island got its name. William Ward was born on Toronto Island in 1847. He was a renowned oarsman. At one point, he was the, he was the single skiff champion of America. But it was his act of bravery and his dedication in saving lives that has made this man a true legend to island residents and Ontarians throughout the province. He is attributed with saving over 160 lives from the Toronto Harbour and was a captain of the Dominion Life-Saving Crew and a Royal Humane Society's Silver Medal recipient. As we all celebrate Ontario's and Canada's 150th birthday this year, I encourage all members of this House to share the remarkable story of William Ward, a true hero to Ontario. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from Dufferin Callanan. Thank you, Speaker. It's a pleasure to rise today on behalf of uh, Dufferin Caledon and share a good news story. Earlier this month, a carbon monoxide leak forced the evacuation of the Grand Valley and District Community Centre. During a pickup game of hockey, people started to feel weak and dizzy, and it wasn't because of the game. Thankfully, an off-duty Dufferin County paramedic, Jason Kwasinski, sorry, Kwasowski, uh, was at the arena and knew what to do. Jason's training and experience kicked in. He recognized the symptoms as possible carbon monoxide poisoning and called a fellow Dufferin County paramedic to get a portable carbon monoxide detector. Sure enough, the carbon monoxide detector went off and the community centre was evacuated. 
Each year, carbon monoxide poisoning in Ontario homes results in thousands of people requiring medical treatment. This incident is an important reminder that we all need to be aware of the signs of carbon monoxide poisoning. Symptoms to look for include a headache, nausea, burning eyes, fainting, confusion, and drowsiness. Continued exposure to carbon monoxide at higher levels may result in unconsciousness, brain damage, and even death. A carbon monoxide poisoning can come from a burning of a variety of different fuels. I want to thank Jason um, Krasowski and all the emergency responders who helped keep our community safe on March 19th. Thank you. Further member statements? Member from Ajax Pickering. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I was uh, saddened this morning when my staff contacted me here in the legislature uh, to to make me aware of the passing of a good friend, a good personal friend, and one of Oshawa and Durham region's leading citizens and an active uh, Oshawa resident. Uh, Mr. Larry Jacular passed away last night, sadly leaving his wife Linda and their two children. Larry has been a teacher and a guidance counselor for more than some 32 years. Wow. He, He's been a Durham and an Oshawa Public School Board trustee and chair of the Durham Board for over eight years. I would, and sometimes my wife Donna would be with me, uh, join them at a public education event uh, when both Larry and Linda were there and we were, we were good friends. His boisterous voice enabled Larry to be the voice of the Oshawa Generals Junior A hockey team for some 24 years. Not quite as Larry as a piece, but and his wife okay. Linda, whose maiden name was Barrett, uh, was a, a, a neighbor of mine and we grew up together, her and her brother, Ro Barrett, uh, when we were teenagers. And we spent a lot of time and, and uh, I'm uh, terribly sad to, to learn about this. Uh, may God be with you, Larry. And I just would be remiss if I didn't uh, mention a couple of more things about Larry as he served as chair of the board of Centennial Albert United Church, a past volunteer with our Boy Scouts and our city committees in, in Oshawa, <clears throat> the Oshawa Sports Hall of Fame Selection Committee. And Larry and his wife Linda have been married for some 48 years, wow. and we will certainly miss Larry. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Kitchener, Conestoga. So, thank you, Speaker. Uh, Speaker, I stand to recognize St. Jacob's own Minnow S. Martin Contracting Limited as they celebrate 75 years of being known as a genuine, uh, for their genuine commitment to providing superior service and quality to their customers. 75 years of putting years. people first. Of course, Menno S. Martin launched the Building Great Communities campaign that encourages residents of Waterloo Region to celebrate all the good that is going on in the lives and businesses around them. By using the hashtag putting people first, the award-winning home builders are hoping to facilitate a discussion that highlights the helpful, nice ways people are showing kindness and love each and every day for each other. Speaker, instead of shining the spotlight on themselves, Menno S. Martin has chosen to spotlight others, engage with their community, facilitate conversations, and recognize others, whether individuals or businesses. They are encouraging us to look around our community and to see all the good already happening. They are continuing to do what they do best, putting people first. And I want to also recognize their most recent project in the town of Elmira, 7 Memorial Avenue, a former brownfield site that they are now building a 25-unit, three-story, affordable apartment building that, in fact, is the only accessible, affordable uh, housing uh, complex in our region with an elevator. I want to make that known, uh, and we congratulate them on f a great uh, project. Of course, in the spirit of putting people first, I would encourage people in our community to join in their effort, take a moment to recognize and thank the many individuals, businesses, and organizations who make our world a better place to be, including sure. our very own Menno S. Mark. Thank you. Thank you. I, I thank all members uh, for their statements. 